When you place an ASP.NET validator control within a details view control, its formatting is controlled by the container control, that is the details view. And it's a good idea to apply formatting to the validator to make sure that it stands out and the user sees it clearly. For this demonstration, I'll be working in the file title insert validation messages.aspx. In this file, I've created a number of validators and applied them to the various form controls, the price and pub date. I'll start by running the page in the browser and show you the nature of the problem. The details view control that contains both the form controls and the validators has a particular background color. I'll leave the price blank and type in a non-date value into the pub date control. And then I'll click the insert link. And you'll see that the error messages using their default formatting are hard to read against the background of the details view. You'll also see that there's a bunch of extra space between the error messages and the controls themselves. That's because with their current settings, the validation controls reserve space for the area that's going to be needed to display the messages. It's possible to make this more dynamic so that the controls only appear and the form only makes adequate space for the messages when an error condition exists. So I'll correct both of those issues. First, I'll deal with the space issue. Each of the validators has a property called display. When I dragged the controls in in design view, the display property wasn't set, but it defaults to something called static. That means that when the form is initially presented, it reserves the space that might be needed for an error. Here's how we can fix that. I'll go to the first validator, the required field validator for the price control, and I'll add a display property, and I'll set it to a value of dynamic. Now, I'll copy that setting, and then I'll paste it into each of the other validators. I'll select display equals dynamic and press control C to copy. Then I'll go to the range validator for the price and paste it in. And I'll do the same for the range validator for the pub date control. Right around line 32 of the file, there's a break tag between the two validators. You'll only see one validator at a time, either the required field validators message or the range validators. You won't be showing both messages simultaneously, so the break tag can go away and now watch what happens when I run the page. And you'll see that that extra space has been eliminated. Then I'll click the insert link and you'll see that the form presentation is modified dynamically to make room for the error message. And if I type in a non-date value into the pub date and click insert again, once again you'll see that the space is allocated as needed. So that's the result of setting the property display to a value of dynamic. Next I'll deal with the formatting issues. It's possible to apply individual formatting options to each control. Let's take the required field validator as an example. I'll place the cursor inside the required field validator tag. I'll press enter and I'll set a property called back color and I'll select a color of pound EE 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 -E -E -E, which is a light gray. I'll save the change and run the page. And then I'll click the insert link and you'll see that the error message is now very easy to read. The problem with this approach, though, is that you'll need to apply that same setting to each individual validator control, not just in this page, but throughout your website. It's a lot better to create a single set of rules and then apply them to all validators. And once again, this is where cascading style sheets can help. I'll solve this problem by creating a single CSS class, and then I'll tell each validator control to use that class by setting its CSS class property and I'll do a little bit of cascading style sheet work. I'll go to the Solution Explorer and locate the file styles.css and double click it to open it. Now I'll go to the CSS outline panel that appears automatically. I'll right click and select add style rule. I'm going to be defining a class, so I'll select class name, click into the input, and I'll name my new CSS class validation error. And then I'll click OK. That creates the validation error class declaration. From here, I can either work in the CSS dialog box or I can just do the code. I know what the code should be, so I'll just type it in. I'll put in background color and set it to a value of pound EE 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 -E -E -E. Be sure if you're typing this from scratch that you include the pound sign before the six character color value. And then I can also set other cascading style sheet properties. For example, I'll set the font weight to a value of bold. So that class is now available to all pages in my website 
because the styles.css file is linked into each of these pages. I'll save the changes, and then I'll go back to the page title insert validation messages.aspx. I'll go to the required field validator, and I'll remove the back color setting, and instead I'll put in CSS class equals, and then I'll select the class name validation error, which shows up automatically in Visual Web Developer because it's constantly monitoring the contents of the styles.css file that's linked into this page. Now I'll select that declaration of CSS class and press Ctrl C to copy it to the clipboard and I'll go to each of the two range validators and paste it in. I'll save those changes and run the page again. I'll once again leave the price blank and I'll type in a non-date value in the pub date to trigger its validation and I'll click insert a couple of times and you'll see that both validation error messages are displayed and they both have the same background color and the same bold font. So that's how you can centralize the formatting of your error messages. So in this video I've described how to cause the validation objects to only allocate space dynamically when the space is needed and I've also described how to define and use common formatting for all validator objects using cascading stylesheet classes and the CSS class property.